power there's a lot of ways to achieve it you can train you can study you can meditate you can be born with it all that really matters is whatever avenue you take it ends up at as much power as possible at least that's the case in anime and manga and a little bit in the real world and every single individual piece of fiction has different ways that you can acquire power though a lot of them do tend to follow the same routes you can be born powerful you can train super hard to be powerful or you can just stumble upon something that makes you powerful and naruto is no exception to this rule well in naruto you can train in your ninjutsu and your taijutsu and your genjutsu you can learn a new elemental release you can get in a ton of battles and get battle IQ, there are some ways that are lesser understood that one acquires power. And probably the way that's the least understood that one acquires power in the Naruto universe is chakra pool. See, in Naruto, we understand that some people have a lot of chakra, while others don't. The Senju and the Uzumaki have insane reserves of chakra that allow them to battle for days, while other clans like the Inazuka or the Lee don't have a lot of chakra. However, it doesn't all boil down to where you're born or who you're born to. Some people make decisions in their lives or decisions are made for them before they're really alive that allow them to access insane amounts of chakra. This is the case with Jinchuriki or people who study the Byakuya seal. There are tons of different ways to max out your chakra pool. You can even technically take your own life and then be brought back throughout a tensei and then boom, infinite chakra, or at least infinitely refilling chakra. But with all these different ways to acquire massive amounts of chakra, one would assume that a lot of people have stumbled upon the key to borderline infinite chakra. However, in the Naruto universe, that's not really the case. Obviously, as the show and the manga progress, more and more people seem to be able to use more and more jutsus more and more frequently. Running out of chakra is still very much a threat for the majority of characters in Naruto. But there are some people that we very rarely see be put in that position. And those are the people we're going to be talking about today. Because today in Naruto, we're talking the top 10 people with the most chakra in Naruto. But before we get to talking about anything, guys, please, for me. Like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you like the idea of me doing top 10s from your favorite anime, you're gonna love my other channel, The Weeb Commander, where I talk all anime that's not Naruto or Boruto. And if you just love the idea of me talking about anime, you're gonna love my anime podcast, Yutaku's Anonymous, that I do every week with Danny Mato, where we break down everything that happened in anime this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. So, chakra pools. They're somewhat inconsistent in the way that they're described. That is to say that some people appear to get massive changes in their chakra pool capacity with little to no explanation. One of the best examples of this being Kakashi, who prior to the fourth great shinobi world war was only able to use Kamui two to three times a day. However, by the time of the climax of the fourth great shinobi world war, he could use it seemingly endlessly. Now we do understand that there are ways to increase your chakra pool. As we know, the chakra is created by a combination of spiritual and physical energy. Therefore, if you acquire more spiritual energy or more physical energy or more of both, you will get more chakra. So in order to acquire more physical energy, you need to be in better shape. You need to be stronger. And to acquire more spiritual energy, you need to get more battles. You need to get more experience. You need to meditate. And by doing both of those things, you can access more chakra. And while we do know that Kakashi and many other people who acquired way more chakra by the time the finale of the fourth great shinobi world war came around were in fact training and rather hard in the time skip, chakra limits do seem to be somewhat arbitrary. However, just because the upper chakra limits of somebody are pretty arbitrary, that doesn't mean that we can't categorize how much chakra each individual person has in comparison to each other. And then make a list about who has the most chakra in Naruto, which is why we're going to start our list right now. Now, I know technically I did say this is a top 10, but there's bonus answers and number 10 technically has two spots and sharing the number 10 spot because we've never really seen anything to differentiate them, at least on a chakra level, is Tsunade and Sakura. See, the reason that Tsunade and Sakura share this position is because the reason they're both on this list is the same jutsu, the strength of a hundred seal. Now the strength of a hundred seal is an incredibly difficult thing to learn. Only those who have the most precise chakra control on earth can learn it. And that's because the sheer task of pulling off this jutsu is insane. The reason this jutsu requires an insane amount of chakra control is because it's a bit like filling a pool with water one bucket at a time. See, the way that this jutsu works is that the user sets a seal on their forehead and every day over the course of years, slowly but surely, they fill that seal with chakra. Any chakra they have left over from the day or just any chakra period goes into the seal, little by little, at least usually. We'll get into that in a second. Until eventually the user has so much chakra in this seal, they can accomplish 
pretty much anything. Now, what's usually accomplished with this seal is that when it's activated, it gives you the strength of a hundred men. That's why it's called the strength of a hundred seal. And thus, in essence, the activation of the seal is supposed to make you somewhere in the region a hundred times stronger, which is an insane boost, mind you. But strength isn't the only thing that can be conferred by the use of the seal, as those who use it also have the ability to use this massive amount of chakra pumping through their body to increase the mitotic regeneration of all of the cells in their body, meaning any injury incurred to you with the possible exception of having your head cut off can be healed, giving you the opportunity to die almost a hundred times before you run out of chakra. And with the power of the seal and this seal alone, the user gains the ability to summon at least part of Lady Katsuyu. See, Lady Katsuyu is so massive that you need to be able to activate this seal to even summon 10% of her. And those without the massive chakra reserves given to them by the usage of this seal will simply never be able to summon enough of her for it ever to matter. Because Lady Katsuyo's true body is the size of a mountain. Even through the combined efforts of both Tsunade and Sakura in the fourth great shinobi world war, they only summon, I believe, because I always get this percentage wrong, 10% of Lady Katsuyo. But can we truly quantify how much chakra Tsunade and Sakura's Byakuya seal give them? Well, no, not necessarily. We do know through the power of this seal that Tsunade was able to pump her medical ninjutsu through Lady Katsuyo to the entirety of Konoha after Nagatoshira Tensei, meaning the seal holds basically enough chakra to heal the entirety of Konoha. On top of this, the usage of this seal also allowed Tsunade to bring her bisected body back together, bring all of the five Kage back to life, and provide constant healing during the fourth great shinobi world war. Well, obviously with the help of Sakura. Now, when it comes to stamina feats, Sakura's are a bit less impressive than Tsunade's. There's no point where Sakura is healing the entirety of a city. Though we have seen in light novels that Sakura wields the strength of a hundred seal, and more specifically the mitotic regeneration that comes along with it, just as well as Tsunade does. This is also confirmed in the fourth great shinobi world war when she just runs at Madara and gets stabbed a bunch. What I will say about Sakura's endurance is the fact that she battled for just as long as anybody else in the fourth great shinobi world war without ever receiving an extra dose of chakra from Ninja Sky Daddy. So all of the chakra that carried Sakura through the fourth great shinobi world war was hers. But the fact that Sakura and Tsunade are number 10 on this list should key you into the fact that there's some people out there with some insane amount of chakra, with our number nine being Karin. See, fortunately for us, Karin and Tsunade actually have quantifiable and somewhat equal amounts of chakra. We know this because Tsunade was able to bite Karin during the fourth great shinobi world war and refill her entire Byakuya seal. And this didn't kill Karin. I mean, it knocked her out, but it didn't kill her. Now, this would imply to us that Karin, who had been on the battlefield for a while, still had enough chakra left to refill years of Tsunade's work in just one mere moment. And therefore, if we assume that Karin wasn't at full chakra, which is a pretty easy assumption when we consider the fact that right before she was healing Tsunade, she was battling against Obito and wooden constructs and using adamantite chains and had the entirety of her back blown out through wood release, which she then had to heal herself, it's pretty easy for us to assume that Karin has more chakra than Tsunade and Sakura. Which makes sense because she is one of the only full-blooded Uzumakis we know of in the modern day. See, Karin's family left the land of whirlpools and went to the land of grass, which is why Karin was able to escape the Uzumaki massacre. However, because she was an Uzumaki with the heel bite ability in a war-torn country, Orochimaru got his grubby little mitts on her, which makes sense that he would want to do because Karin has heel bite, which allows people to bite her and heal and refill their chakra immediately. Even if you're recently bisected and just emptied years worth of chakra in a battle against the weaker version of the final villain who managed to kill all five Kage simultaneously. And when it comes to quantifying Karin's upper chakra limits, this is really the best possible example for it. I mean, obviously throughout the duration of both Naruto and Boruto, because Karin shows up again, we've seen her refill the chakra of and heal the injuries of multiple people, with those multiple people usually being Sasuke, who Karin was able to save from multiple stab wounds from Killer B, also rejuvenating his chakra so Sasuke could go on to get defeated once again by Killer B. But outside of being able to rejuvenate people with a bite, Karin also has access to tons of Uzumaki abilities, like the Mind's Eye of the Kagura and Adamantite Chains, which are incredibly chakra depleted of abilities that never have seemed to slow her down. Once again, the only time we've ever seen her slow down is when she completely refilled Tsunade's chakra. So putting her at number nine, feels Feels like a pretty easy choice. But I know what you're saying. Nick, a full-blooded Uzumaki at number nine, who could possibly be number eight? Well, that would also be somebody who was possibly subject to human experimentation and also comes from a war-torn village because coming in at number eight, 
We have Kisame. See, Kisame is known as the tailless tailed beast, an absolute monster of stamina. In fact, his chakra pool is so large, he was able to wield Samehata for over a decade, which is one of those chakra exhaustive things you can do. As Samehata, even though the biggest attribute of Samehata is its ability to suck chakra from your enemies, when you're not battling enemies, constantly absorbs your chakra. As Samehata is a living sword that requires chakra to stay alive, and therefore only those with insane amounts of chakra can wield Samehata effectively. Outside of that, however, you also have to have a certain type of chakra that Samehata likes. As people with insane amounts of chakra, like Naruto, have been rejected by Samehata. Tie this into the fact that Kisame could refill his chakra reserves through the usage of Samehata, absorbing chakra from his opponent's cuts, and you have an insanely intimidating foe. I mean, when Kisame used 30% of his chakra to create a doppelganger that could battle against Naruto and Team 7 in order to keep them away from the Akatsuki hideout long enough to pull out the tailed beast out of Gara. the chakra levels of that 30% doppelganger were compared to Naruto. Now, mind you, this was Naruto fresh off the time skip. He hadn't mastered Sage mode. He didn't know KCM1, KCM2. He wasn't tight with Kurama. So no, I'm not gonna sit here and say that Kisame has three times more chakra than Naruto. But a third of your chakra being compared to any iteration of Naruto is gonna put you on this list. But enough about the bad guys. Let's get back to the good because coming in at number seven, we have the third Raikage, a. Now, of all the characters on this list, we probably know the least about the Third Raikage. However, what we do know about the Third Raikage are his battle feats. See, when it comes to endurance and stamina, the Third Raikage is pretty unrivaled. See, not only has the Third Raikage battled against Kiyuki by himself for 24 hours until the both of them ran out of chakra and the battle was pretty much declared a draw, but he has also by himself battled against an army of 10,000 Shinobi for 72 hours. Listen, the 24 hour feat is cool. A couple of people have done it. Madara, Hashirama, just a couple of names that come to the brain. However, there is no one in the Naruto universe that has battled for that long straight. And while obviously the third Raikage does technically have a moveset that is advantageous to this kind of long form battle, and that is Nin Taijutsu, which is essentially just Taijutsu boosted with Ninjutsu. The maintenance of this Nin Taijutsu for three straight days at a high level still requires an insane amount of chakra. It's not like he could take breaks. He was battling against 10 thousand people in the entirety of the time that he was battling against these ten thousand people you better believe that he had his lightning cloak activated which means on top of using his lightning cloak he was most definitely using his hell stab which means for 72 hours straight the third raikage had to maintain a layer of electrical chakra around himself mind you madara being able to maintain his ms for 24 hours straight is claimed to be one of the most impressive endurance feats of all time now maintaining an ms is probably a bit more chakra taxing than using the lightning cloak and hell stab but being able to battle against the second strongest tailed beast by yourself for 24 hours before running out of chakra and making sure that Kiyuki runs out of chakra at the same time as you implies that the third Raikage's chakra levels are comparable to that of Kiyuki. And as Kiyuki is the tailed beast with eight tails, not no tails like Kisame, I can't help but think that if the third Raikage's chakra levels are comparable to Kiyuki's that he has more chakra than Kisame. But we mentioned Madara, so let's talk about her because coming in at number six, is Madara. Now, placing Madara when talking about chakra pool is kind of tough. So for the purpose of today's video, we're gonna be talking about a live Madara, because obviously the three Renegun Madara who Hagoromo was afraid was approaching him in power probably has the most chakra out of anybody outside of the Otsutsukis. I mean, he was able to maintain three Rinnegan. He had Hashirama's Sage Mode. He was basically the next up and coming Sage of Six Paths. He was the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails. But for the sake of today's video, not just being a list of Otsutsukis, I'm trying to keep them off this list because otherwise the top six would just be random Otsutsukis. Cause I'll tell you right now, Kaguya Ishiki, Momoshiki, Kinshiki, Orishiki, and what's the one on the moon? Toneri. All have more chakra than any human alive. Yes, Naruto included, but that's boring. So today, we're talking about Madara while he was alive, who still had an insane amount of chakra. And he kind of had to. Remember that Madara's eternal rival was Hashirama, who was stated to have 
basically limitless chakra. And Hashiram also had an infinite healing factor that was powered by that chakra. And thus, if Madara ever wanted any hopes of defeating Hashirama, he would have to damage him so many times that Hashirama would run out of chakra and therefore run out of healing factor. But that's next to impossible to do. See, when Madara was born, even amongst the Uchihas, his chakra was said to be demonic. Now, this is partially because he was a reincarnation of Indra, and therefore inherited the cycle of hatred more than any other Uchiha. And being the successor of Indra's chakra allowed him to pull off feats, like battling against Hashirama and Tobirama for a full 24 hours. However, this isn't even the most impressive thing that Madara ever did. See, Madara as an old man, when he awoke to his dual Rinnegan, was able to summon the Ghetto Maza, also known as the demonic statue of the Outer Path, from its cage on the moon. Now, for those of you who don't remember, the demonic statue of the Outer Path is the Husk of the Ten Tails. And the husk is so large that Choji and Choza, when fully expanded, were still smaller than it. Now, mind you, Choji and Choza, at their full height, are said to be the size of a mountain. And Madara summoned that from the moon. From inside of the moon, actually. Madara has so much chakra that even when he split his chakra into 25 clones in the Fourth Great Shinobi World War, he was still enough to defeat the Five Ka. But Madara did come from the Uchiha, who aren't exactly known for their massive chakra reserves. While they obviously need enough chakra to control the MS or the EMS or just the standard Sharingan, when it comes down to it, birthright also means a lot when we're talking about chakra pool. Which is why, coming in at number 5, we have another full-blooded Uzumaki. Just this time, it's Nagato. See, well, there is a lot of things that one can do to increase their chakra. Being born in the Uzumaki clan is pretty much the best way to get a massive chakra pool. But even amongst the Uzumaki, Nagato had an insane amount of chakra. This is why Madara chose him to be the wielder of his Rinnegan after his death. Because Madara understood that this boy, who was only a couple of years old at the time, would have enough chakra to wield to Rinnegan. Now, mind you, Obito, as a full-grown adult, could only wield one at a time. A full-grown adult who had half a body of Hashirama's cells. And yet, Nagato, as a child, had enough chakra to wield both. Now, obviously, when it comes to chakra feats, Nagato has a ton. Nagato was left permanently crippled after his battle against Hanzo, where he sustained injuries to his legs after summoning the Ghetto Maza, which meant that Nagato, if he wanted to continue to battle, had to channel his power and his chakra through the six paths of pain. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, after summoning the Ghetto Mazo, Nagato became connected to multiple chakra rods. Chakra rods that Nagato could use to send out chakra to other chakra rods that he placed in the bodies of the six paths of pain. And Nagato operated these six paths of pain like they were dolls, essentially, from massive distances away, mind you, sometimes miles. And not only was he controlling all six of these incredibly powerful dolls simultaneously, with each one of them manifesting one of the abilities of the Renegon outside of the Deva Path, which had them all, but he was also seeing through the eyes of every single one of the six paths of pain, as well as augmenting the chakra frequency that he was sending to the six paths of pain so it could never be tied down where his actual body was. I mean, Nagato's chakra reserves are so insane that in the battle against Naruto, he was not only only able to control all six paths of pain to basically destroy the entirety of Konoha and all of the ninja there. Also channel enough chakra into the Deva Path that he was able to use a Shirai Tensei that flattened the biggest village on Earth. Now, obviously, after using this technique, the Deva Path needed a minute to recharge, and this took a lot out of Nagato, technically shortening his life. But even though it seemed after using that Shirai Tensei that Nagato was going to be out of the battle for a while, all five of the other Paths of Pain continued battling with no issue. And after a couple of minutes, the Deva Path was right back up and running, going so far in that same battle as to use a Chewbacca Tensei so large, it was able to basically seal Kurama. Not to mention, Nagato went on to individually kill every Jonin and Konoha, basically. And after doing all of this, Nakato still had enough chakra left to use Rennie Rebirth to bring every person he killed in Konoha back to life. Which leads us to believe that Nagato had so much chakra he could use Rennie Rebirth on one person and probably survive. Uzumaki's are just built different. Which is why we have another Uzumaki on this list. Because coming in at number four, we have Kushina. And see, this list should really be called How Closely Related Are You to the Uzumaki? Because there is nobody in the Naruto world who has as much chakra and life force as them. This is why they were creators of some of the strongest Fuinjutsu in all of Naruto. The amount of chakra they were able to control at their fingertips was enough to put the clamps on pretty much anything. On top of this, this is why the Uzumakis were the creators of things like the Eight Trigram Seal and Reaper Death Seal. As not only were they incredible at sealing things away, they themselves were also considered the perfect Jinchuriki, having the chakra and life force necessary to balance out 
and E-tailed beast. Now, obviously, the Uzumaki life force comes from their close relation to the Senju, as the Uzumaki and the Senju were close descendants of Asura, who received the chakra in life force of Hagoroma. But so far as red-haired Uzumakis go, Kushina by far and away has the most chakra. While some would say we don't have enough feats to scale just how much chakra Kushina has, I would rally against that. While true, we do technically have way more battle data from the likes of Nagato and even Karin, there's a reason that Kushina was sent to Konoha. See, when Kushina was sent to Konoha, the village hidden in the whirlpools, the Uzumaki clan headquarters, still exist, and they had an incredibly close relationship with Konoha. The Senju and the Uzumaki had been battling side by side for thousands of years. Hashirama married Mito. They had children. Mito went to Konoha to become the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails, which Konoha kept. And therefore, when Mito hit an age where people were starting to get concerned that she would soon pass away, Konoha decided to call the Land of Whirlpools and were like, can you send us your best? And at that current moment, Kushina, as a child, around eight or nine years old, was sent to Konoha. Because by the time that Kushina was eight or nine years old, she was already identified, even amongst the Uzumaki clan, to have an insane amount of chakra. We learned this in chapter 500 when we learned that Kushina was able to create a unique form of chakra that made her compatible with being a Jinchuriki. And that unique form of chakra was just incredibly potent chakra. And while obviously Kushina at her max chakra is while she was a Jinchuriki, as we are now talking about a woman who amongst the Uzumakis was considered to have insane life force and chakra, being the Jinchuriki of the strongest tailed beast in existence, meaning that effectively she could have doubled or tripled the amount of chakra she had access to, Kushina's most impressive chakra and life force feats happen after she stops becoming a Jinchuriki. See, Kushina's life force and chakra reserves were so incredibly high that after giving birth, she had Kurama extracted from her. Mind you, most women, after they give birth, aren't able to move for a little while. And most people in the Naruto universe, when they have their tailed beast removed, die immediately. However, this isn't necessarily the case with Uzumaki's. Both Mito and Kushina survived Kurama's extraction. And while Kushina might have died eventually from having Kurama extracted, she most likely wouldn't have. As like we've already stated, Mito survived Kurama being extracted from her and continued to live on for a couple of years. But Mito just existed in bed. Kushina did not do that. Kushina went right onto the battlefield beside her husband Minato and by herself released adamantite chains that not only sealed Kurama, but also created a barrier around the battlefield that heroes it. Sarutobi could not break through. Kushina was not only using her adamantite chains to seal the strongest tailed beast on Earth, she was keeping out one of the most powerful human beings on Earth from joining in on the battle. Simultaneously, after having something that should have killed her happen to her. Now, obviously she wasn't able to seal Kurama perfectly. He was still able to swing one hand, but the nail that Kurama swung through Minato and Kushina was roughly this large. And even after being impaled by said nail, Kushna did not die immediately. When it comes to chakra pools, she is next level, even amongst Uzumaki. But she's not Asura's reincarnation. See, being an Uzumaki is incredible. As a clan, they're the closest things to Asura's reincarnation. But that's the closest thing, not the thing. See, because while the Uzumaki clan do technically inherit the chakra of Hagoromo because they descend from Asura's line, reincarnations of Asura have Asura's spirit following them around. And Asura was the direct inheritor of Hagoromo's chakra in life force, which is why our top three start with Hashirama. Hashirama, also known as the God of Shinobi, got the majority of his power from his life force and his chakra. See, when it came to a battle, there was basically no way to kill Hashirama. He had mitotic regeneration levels of heals that would just simply happen. He didn't have to weave hand signs. If you cut him, he healed. And that was powered by an almost limitless amount of chakra. In fact, after battling against Madara for 24 hours, he was still left primed to battle, with Madara flat on his back, with Tobirama holding a katana over his neck. Hashirama's chakra is so dense and so plentiful that when he releases it, it affects the physical surroundings. That's only something we've ever seen in two people, Naruto and Hashirama. Being able to create waves around you simply by releasing your chakra is insane. This is similar to how the Hyugas use rotation, releasing chakra from each and every single one of their 10 Ketsu points. However, the difference here is 
this isn't intentional and there's no rotating required. The best way we have to quantify Hashirama's chakra is from the fourth great shinobi world war when Hashirama was looking out at the shinobi alliance covered in version one cloaks provided by Naruto and Kurama and it's at this point that Hashirama stated while looking at this combination of Naruto and Kurama's chakra basically in its entirety that oh this is about as much chakra I had when I was alive. Now, this has led some to believe that Hashirama only has as much chakra as half of Kurama. However, that couldn't be further from the truth. Hashirama was referring to the combination of Naruto and half of Kurama's chakra, meaning that Hashirama, while he was alive and in his peak, had a comparable amount of chakra to war arc Naruto, which makes sense when you consider the fact that he's able to pull off incredibly high level jutsus with next to no hand seals use things like the thousand arm kanon that are able to punch susanos of kurama and a lot of that is because of his sage mode see hashirama is only truly able to access his highest level of jutsu after tapping into his sage mode which is why he uses sage art true 1000 arms kanon now obviously a large amount of hashiramas wood release does come from pulling in senjutsu chakra the level of senjutsu chakra required to pull off things like true 1000 arm kanon is insane and mind you the way that you make senjutsu chakra is combining nature energy with your own chakra so anybody who's able to wield an ungodly amount of senjutsu has to have an ungodly amount of chakra and mind you hashirama's healing factor uses a comparable amount if not more chakra than Tsunade and sakura's mitotic regeneration and it's always on which some people have to save up chakra for years to use he just wakes up with outside of all of this one of the best examples we have of hashirama's insane levels of chakra is the fact that he was able to maintain the four red yang formation which is a kage level barrier capable of keeping the ten tails confined while also having 10 wood clones running around meaning at one tenth of his chakra level hashirama had enough chakra to maintain a barrier strong enough to keep the ten tails right where he wanted which isn't even the first time he did that because he's also able to use his god deity gates which were able to not only pin the ten tails down but jubito for a little bit and this was a non-peak hashirama but why settle for a reincarnation of asura when you can just have asura i know i know i said i wasn't gonna do any otsutsuki but I, I don't know he's got human skin i feel like him and indra don't count like he's technically only what of fourth otsutsuki hagoromo would be half and then yeah they would be a fourth that feels low enough now when it comes to canon feats for asura we have none in fact when it comes to pretty much any canon information about asura or indra we don't have much so we're gonna be taking from filler here we learned in the filler episodes about asura and indra that asura was just like naruto born with no special attributes however by undergoing grueling hard work and amassing a bunch of loyal followers eventually he began to form into a powerful well not ninja but human being and upon realizing that Asura was a capable leader Hagoromo decided to leave him with his body which essentially means that Hagoromo left him his life force and his chakra now, having the life force and the chakra of Hagoromo is insane while technically Hagoromo now post-death has infinite chakra pre-death he still had a pretty good amount I mean he was the Jinchuriki of the Tentails he had creation of all things he could do anything he wanted now he can do more than that but before he died he could still do a lot and upon inheriting his father's body he also became the inheritor of ninshu and spreading ninshu with the world hagoromo's life goal but also after inheriting his father's body he was able to defeat indra who inherited his eyes and he was obviously able to do this through the usage of his asura mode and his giant rasengan bubble with a bunch of other rasengans in it now mind you the rasengan is supposed to be the height of shape transformation in jutsu with the rasen shuriken being an extra step bringing it even further into the upper echelons of shape transformation however asura's ability to create a bubble and then make a bunch of rasengan circling around in that bubble is one step even further now the name of this technique is ameno no me hashira but we're gonna call it chakra bubble and asura's chakra was so insane that he could sense people from countries away and heal anybody's injuries he could put people to sleep by controlling their senses in the anime he also had true thousand hands which he used to battle against indra's susano because why not just completely recycle everything we've already seen but on top of this he also had six paths senjutsu and yin yang release so not only did he have hagoromo chakra he also unlike hashirama had six paths senjutsu which allowed him to tap into a super boosted form of chakra allowing him to control and manifest six true secret orbs simultaneously as well as manifest 
manifesting his six pass Kunitsukami, which is essentially when Naruto combined the three versions of Kurama to give him three heads and six arms. Because why not just recycle everything? But I mean, he's the guy who makes everybody else have more chakra by being their reincarnation, so he's gotta be really high on the list. Though, ironically, not as high on the list as one of his reincarnations. Because coming in at number one is Naruto. Oh, oh, or are we surprised? Did we think it was gonna be some sleeper pick? You make a list of Naruto that has anything to do with power and guess who's at number one on the list? It's Naruto. In the war, he had as much chakra as Hashirama had in his peak and that was before acquiring the entirety of Kurama. The combination of his chakra and half of Kurama was enough to go up against a whole other half of Kurama and eight other tailed beasts and Sasuke in the Valley of the End. He only became closer with Kurama after the conclusion of the Fourth Great Shinobi World War and therefore was able to access the entirety of Kurama's chakra to use things like Baryon mode. He was able to create a Rasengan so large that Delta's chakra absorption system malfunction and she was destroyed. Momoshiki pulled out his chakra for six hours and only got half of it. He, when he activated Baryon mode, collided his chakra with Kurama, and Kurama ran out of chakra first. And Kurama is stronger than all of the other tailed beasts combined. He is Ashura's reincarnation, and therefore he has Hagoromo's body. While as far as Ashura reincarnations and Ashura go, he obviously doesn't use wood release. He was, while in Kurama chakra mode, able to create two shadow clones, jam everybody together, give Kurama three heads and six arms. Six arms which he used to create a six paths ultra big ball Rasen Shuriken and a tailed beast Rasen Shuriken simultaneously and throw them at Sasuke's Indra's arrow which was powered by eight and a half tailed beasts. Mind you, this was after battling against the likes of Obito in Madara for a day. Yet he was still able to not only enter his Kurama chakra mode but also duplicate it. Which meant even while exhausted he had enough chakra to maintain a Kurama chakra mode with one third chakra. In Naruto the last, we've seen that he's able to manifest Kurama separate of himself, while also being able to generate enough chakra to destroy a Tensei God, as well as be able to coat himself with enough dense chakra that he can deflect an attack that split the moon in half. He, with the help of Sasuke, was able to pull off a six past Shibaku Tensei and recreate a moon in Kakia's dimension. When it comes to chakra, there is nobody that even comes close. Even the man that he's supposedly a reincarnation of. I mean, there is people who come close just nobody on this list. As basically every Otsutsuki we've ever met has more chakra than Naruto. Yes, Kaguya, Momoshiki, Ishiki, Hagoromo all have more chakra than Naruto. And if technically you wanted to make a list about who in the Naruto universe has the most chakra, period, Otsutsuki's included, it would be either Shibai Otsutsuki or Hagoromo. As both have shed their physical bodies and have the ability to travel between dimensions and are possibly infinitely powered by, well, concepts. As Hagoromo gathers his power from the Pure Lands, which is canonical Naruto heaven, and Shibai probably gathers his power from a wall of Jogon that exists in a dimension that he controls. Now, Kagi also definitely has more chakra than Naruto. Her ability to pull parts of dimensions to herself is probably one of the most insane things we've seen in all of Naruto. See, Kagi doesn't teleport the people around her to a dimension. Kagi opens dimensional rifts and rips parts of dimensions to her. Her, as well as being a wielder of the Rinne Sharingan and being able to launch Infinite Tsukiyomi, a planet-busting attack, amongst a myriad of other reasons, basically every Otsutsuki, with the possible exception of Kinshiki or Shiki, and maybe Toneri, has more chakra than Naruto. But that's boring. And just like that, that's it. The top 10 chakra pools in Naruto ranked and explained. Do you guys agree with my ranking? Do you wish I added the Otsutsukis in? Tell me in the comments below. And why you guys are down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Again, I'm aware that the office is depressing. It'll soon be so gorgeous. I mean, it won't be. This will be a very empty room in a couple of days, but the new office will be gorgeous.